So we all know building a PC right now absolutely sucks, but is it still possible to build a decent gaming PC for around $1,000, maybe less? We're gonna see, I think it usually is, and I'm actually gonna do this live with you guys, take you through my, uh, my um, thought process, and we're here on PCPartPicker.com because what I wanna show you guys is this is not gonna be like pretending you can get something at MSRP or shopping around for deals, trying to get a Best Buy drop, getting on a waiting list. I'm showing you what the actual just like, I have a real job and like I don't have time to hunt these deals and get, try to beat the bots and all of that. What does it actually look like on the actual market? So the number one thing people have a problem with right now is the video card choice. So here's the thing. Um, video cards are insanely expensive right now, but in general, I've been able to find the RX 6600. I'm gonna sort uh, low to high pricing here on this for, yeah, sitting in stock here at $460 pretty much all the time on Newegg. Every now and then I see it sell out, but like for the last few weeks, maybe even a month now, I've been monitoring this and it's almost always available. Now, a lot of people worry about going with AMD or don't even understand how the AMD cards stack up against uh, Nvidia. So first of all, I'm gonna say that this is targeting 1080p and you can check my channels for reviews on an RX 6600. It's not this exact model on, that I have on my channel, but I do have an RX 6600. And at 1080p, this plays the latest games without ray tracing at 1080p, pretty much maxed out settings over 60 FPS. Occasionally I had to tweak something down to high instead of ultra, like on one option or something like that. And if you are willing to go down to high, uh, you can usually get well above 60 FPS. Now the main shortcoming on this card is that its performance falls off a bit as you go to 1440p. And you can look up specific reviews, but I'll tell you right now, if you just wanna play at native resolution without ray tracing, and I think at this price point, ray tracing right now doesn't really make sense to be honest. Honest, um, then this is a good card and it will get the job done. And that's gonna be my recommendation. The main problem, you might be like, why not an RTX 3060? Okay, well, uh, RTX 3060 is gonna cost way more for us right now. And this is what I'm getting at. This is why I went ahead and uh, went with this one. If we look at competitors, so I guess we should actually compare that just to make sure there's no deals right now or something like that. But if I wanna go with an RTX 3060, uh, I think I can do it here. RTX 3060, uh, then if I go low to high price, we're, we're, for an in-stock model, we're paying $750. And again, you can find better deals if you're willing to like hunt around and fight the bots, but that's what we're up against. The RTX 3060 is a slightly better card, has slightly better performance, especially at 1440p, and it has ray tra better ray tracing, and it has DLSS, but I don't think it's worth an extra $300, almost doubling the price, right? I mean, not doubling, but you get what I'm saying here. And if you're like, why not the RTX 3050? Well, sure, you could get a RTX 3050 for $430, which is basically the same price, but performance-wise, these are not gonna be the same, uh, the same specs you'd have to use DLSS on the 3050 just to catch up to the 6600 at 1080p. To be clear, the RTX 3050 falls in right around here in this sort of product stack. And the 6600, while it's not showing up on this list right now, uh, pretty much at 1080p ties a 2060 Super. So it's like a 30% performance advantage. And so basically you would require DLSS just to come even with the 6600, let alone try to surpass it. So I don't think the RTX 3050 makes sense for you unless there's some NVIDIA feature, you just have to have NVIDIA. Uh, I, I just think when they're priced almost the same, the 6600 is just a, a far better graphics card. So RX 6600 is going to be my recommended, apparently I can't type, my goodness. The RX 6600, when it costs about the same as the 3050, is gonna be my recommendation, and the, 60, uh, the 3060 is certainly a better card, but good luck finding it anywhere near this price uh, if you're not spending all day long hunting for deals every day. Now, how about the CPU? We've gotta get the rest of this build in here fairly cheap. Now, the ones I would recommend here are either the 12100, F, 
which uh, 12100 or 12100F, but the problem is these things are selling out because they're an incredible deal. So if you could get one of these, you can bring the price down on your build and maybe even fit in like an RX 6600 XT or something like that. But I'm trying to base this on what you can actually find in stock right now. So then the next thing we can look at is the 12400 and the 12400F. The difference between the two is the F does not have the integrated graphics processor and that usually makes it cheaper. The problem we're running into right now is supply. So if you can find the 12400F for cheaper than the 12400, um, I'd recommend getting it if it's significantly cheaper. It is convenient to have the integrated GPU though, uh, in case you're like trying to troubleshoot issues with your graphics card or something like that. So if it's not a huge price difference, definitely get the 12400, not the 12400F. Currently, um, these are, are the way to go. Now the next step ups in terms of performance, I really don't think you're gonna really be able to take advantage of it on an RX 6600. And I think the 12400 is even gonna be a fantastic CPU going into the future. Don't worry that it's six core instead of eight core or something like that. These six cores are much more powerful than the eight cores in the current gen consoles, like a PS5 and a Series X. And that's what a lot of games are gonna be developed targeting for years to come. And this is significantly more powerful than that. It doesn't really so much matter um, how many cores you have if, if your each core can do more work than, than the cores on, on the um, you know, older chips. So I think this is a good way to go. The other thing is this can actually func function just fine with its stock cooler. Sure, you could get another cooler here, but if we're trying to uh, you know, worry about our budget, I don't think it makes sense to throw in a cooler here unless you have room to spare. I'm trying to cut costs to fit in our graphics card because of the current market. So I'm gonna go with just use the stock cooler. You can always add another cooler in later if you're not happy with your temperatures or the fan noise or something like that. But all the reviews I've seen say you get plenty of performance out of this thing on its stock cooler for the kind of gaming frame rates you're gonna get on an RX 6600. All right, now we need a motherboard to go with it. The main downside to the, um, uh, the 12th gen Intel Alder Lake chips is that the motherboards are pretty expensive. Now you might be tempted to go with an H610. I feel like you lose a lot of features on the H610 and I'm not going to recommend that. Although do your own research to see if those are features that you know you don't care about. I also think it would be an absolute waste to go with the Z690 because you'd mainly want that if you're gonna be overclocking and the 12400 is not a K model CPU, we're not gonna be doing overclocking, which means the B660 is probably gonna be the way to go here. And I'd recommend go with the cheap one, <laughs> right? Um, unless there's reviews that say that you shouldn't. So I recommend just looking at which B660s are cheapest at the moment that you're purchasing and then just look for reviews to see if there's anything horribly wrong with them. Looks like right now there's like a $17 difference or so between this one and the next one up. So I'm just gonna grab this cheap one, but just say that you know, at the moment of purchase, check what kind of deals you can get here. Now notice that this is gonna be a DDR4 board. So a lot of people said, well, Alder Lake only, you know, it's too expensive on the DDR5. We'll just get the DDR4 version, then that's not gonna be an issue. Speaking of which, let's grab some memory. So here's what I recommend. I recommend that you still shoot for 16 gigabytes. 32 is great if you have budget to burn, but most games are still gonna be fine on 16 unless you have a bunch of browser tabs open at the same time or something like that. So we're gonna go with, and you definitely wanna go with uh, dual uh, you know, uh, memory sticks. You don't wanna go with a single 16 gigabyte chip because then you're running in single channel mode and that's gonna hurt your performance. You want two by eight, um, or you could go two by 16, like I said, if you really want 32 gigabytes, you're heavy multitask or something like that. Um, but for just straight up uh, gaming, this shouldn't be uh, too, um, uh, too much of a problem just being on 16 other than some very specific games. Now, I'm just gonna sort low to high so it looks like the cheapest kit we could get right now is a, a DDR3000, uh, DDR4-3000 at, ca at cast 16. But if we're willing to spend $2 more, we could go up to 3200 at the same uh, cast latency. So I believe that it's gonna make sense to do that. Now going past 3200 cast 16, I don't think makes sense for this build. That's gonna be if you're target, you know, you can push your RAM speeds if you're targeting like a really CPU intensive esports title or something like that, but I don't think it makes sense for the kind of build we're looking at here, especially with the price budget we're trying to stay under. 
Okay, now storage. You could certainly cut costs by going with a 500 gigabyte SSD and then fitting in more um, hard drive storage rather than SSD storage. But for me, I don't want a spinning hard drive in my computer at all. And games these days can be pretty big. So I'm gonna recommend searching for at least a thousand gigabytes. In other words, we wanna go with a, a terabyte of storage. And we want an SSD. And M.2s are nice. Um, let's see what the pricing is. Usually it's not, uh, you know, too crazy of a difference between going with, like, right? You can go with these SATA drives, which honestly, just for gaming, are probably gonna be fine. Um, I don't think we need to really worry about the direct storage and like PCIe Gen 4 and all that on this budget of a build right now. So let's see. Um, I'm gonna be honest here, you might wanna research the specific SSDs and deals that are available at your time of purchase. I'm just gonna say, I recommend slipping in a one terabyte SSD. And there's a lot that goes into SSD choices. You, you might wanna check on the DRAM cache available, you know, and all of that. But this might be an unpopular opinion, but I'm gonna say for just day-to-day -day use in gaming, um, you actually don't need to overthink this, although there absolutely is a ton, a ton of stuff you could think about on your SSD. And depending on your use cases, that's a whole other rabbit hole you could go down that I don't have time to go into in this particular video. I'm just gonna pop this in here and say you could research a lot more about SSDs and spend a little bit more if that seems worth it to you. All right, um, how's our budget doing? We're already up to a little over $900 and we need to basically just fit in a case and a power supply. I'm gonna leave the operating system off the table because a lot of people already have access to a license to that. And then there's a wide variety of opinions on whether you should trust the gray market type deals um, on, on Windows keys uh, and all of that. I'm just not gonna get into that in this video at all. <laughs> so power supply is more important than the case. So we're gonna take a look at that. I'm just gonna sort, sort prices low to high. And then I'll just say that like random brands that I don't recognize, I'm just not gonna trust. But we also don't need a whole lot of power on this build. Although having a bit of headroom to upgrade a GPU later when hopefully GPU prices get better and maybe you could afford a higher end GPU would certainly be nice. So I'm gonna kind of scroll down here. You also wanna keep an eye on the, on the reviews. I don't wanna get a, a unit that doesn't really have any reviews or anything like that. Um, how about this? We're seeing an EVGA BR, which is not fantastic, okay? But we're getting a, 60, a 600 watt power supply, which is more than what we need, which means that if it's maybe a little lower end, I mean, EVGA is a fairly trusted brand. You could look up more specifics if you wanted to, but this has 31 reviews at five stars. It's only $45. So I'm gonna throw this in here and once again, just say that you could go down a big rabbit hole on specific power supply reviews, and you might want to when you're actually purchasing. Um, by the time you watch this video, the prices on individual components might change. So I'm trying to give you a, a uh, basic idea for the build, and you might wanna tweak the specific models based on the prices that are available when you're searching, although I will link this in the um, video description. Okay, so if we wanna stay at $1,000, this gives us like $40 for a case. We could see what's available here. <laughs> so if I sort low to high, there are some $40 cases available here. Um, I'm gonna go with this Cougar mesh. A mesh, right, I'm making sure it's a mid tower and I'm not going with something super tiny that might be hard to build in. I'm also looking at the product reviews. Um, so for example, this, this uh, well, Cougar mesh doesn't actually have any reviews on it. Oh man. How about this, okay, this one has more reviews. It seems, this is this just a more updated model and it's more mesh? I'm just gonna say, once again, you could go down a rabbit hole here on cases, but it looks like we can fit in something around 40 or $50 into our budget for the case. And you can certainly pay more uh, if you want uh, a better case to build in. I'm just trying to say that we can stay in right here at $1,000 for this build. Um, and I think this will be absolutely solid. Like I said, tweak individual parts. If you wanted to spend a bit more here, uh, you could definitely spend a bit more on a power supply, a bit more on your case. You could spend a bit more on, on your SSD. You could spend a bit more on your RAM. 
<laughs> you know, you could spend a bit more on your motherboard. You could even go for an RX 6600 XT, but usually those are coming in closer to $600, although occasionally you can find them for more like $550, $500. Um, so I'm just saying you could spend a lot more and start upgrading this, but if we're sticking to a thousand dollar budget, this is what we have room for in our budget. You know, you could cut money here on the 12400. You could go down to a 12100 if you did find one in stock. And that would, I think, still be just fine for this build. Although I think if you're going to keep it long term and maybe survive at least one GPU upgrade without wanting to upgrade your CPU, I, I do think the 12400 is going to have better longevity than the 12100 will. But I'm saying if you want to cut the budget somewhere, uh, that's almost the only place I would recommend cutting it. Everything else, we're kind of down about as low as I'd want to go. You could research the H610 motherboards, but again, for me, I don't think it's worth it on, on the trade-off there, and I definitely wouldn't go below 16 gigabytes of RAM. Anyway, what do you guys think? Let me know. Uh, and I might do some maybe uh, other build ideas, explore other budgets besides $1,000 in a future video. Have an excellent day.